System components of the B40 include the transportation handle, the alarm light, the trim knob, the command board keys, your main power and battery LED, the on or standby keys, as well as the GCX guardrail. So as we navigate through the main screen of the B40, you will see the alarm message field on the upper left-hand corner, which shows information or alarm messages. On the upper right-hand corner, you see the battery indicator, which tells you how many batteries are actually inside the monitor, as well as the time, the patient particulars, and the care area. So below that, you will see the waveform digits. All waveforms align with the respective parameters. So where you will see the waveform in the middle corresponding to the waveform digits. You can do a maximum of six waveforms on your screen. On the lower hand corner, you will see the digit fields. Up to four digit fields can be displayed. And on the left side, you will see mini trends if activated. Now we go to the command board keys. First, we have the on or standby key, followed by the main power and battery LEDs, which indicates main or external DC power. Admit or discharge button for admitting or discharging a patient for selecting user modes. Patient data and trends for viewing trends and alarm history. Monitor setup for setting up the monitor and for activating the help menu. Alarm setup for activating the alarm setup menu. Print or record for printing and recording different trends and waveforms. Take snapshot for taking up to 10 snapshots. Next, you will see parameter-specific menus such as ECG, NIBP, airway gases, SpO2, IBP, as well as other parameters. NIBP auto on or off for starting or stopping the NIBP manual cycling. NIBP start or cancel for starting or stopping the NIBP manual determination. Recorder start or stop for starting or stopping local recording. IBP zero all for zeroing the invasive pressure channels. Silent alarm for silencing the alarms. And lastly, home screen to navigate back to the normal screen. So each parameter has a menu that allows you to perform actions related to the parameter. Menus open on the left side of the screen and will always allow a portion of the waveforms to be visible on the right side. The menu title will be here on top and then you use the trim knob. So press down and then you either rotate left or right and then you press the trim knob once to select the highlighted option. The text box provides description of each highlighted menu option. To close the menu and return to the main screen, you press the normal screen. So scroll down the trim knob and then press once. To access the Admit Discharge menu, we press the command key, Admit Discharge. The menu title once again will appear on top. And then you use the trim knob, rotate left or right, and then press to select the option. 
to admit a patient, first you choose the patient type. AP stands for adult or pediatric. Press once. AP or neonate. Press the trim knob once to choose your selection. Next, you scroll down to key in the last name, the first name, and the patient ID of your patient. So rotate the trim knob, press once to enter. You can scroll left or right. to choose numerics or the alphabet. Once done, press N using the trim knob. It will bring you back to your previous screen. Next, you can, you can key in the demographics of your patient. So scroll the trim knob, press once, where you will see the height, weight, age, body surface area of your patient. Once you have finished keying all those data, you can press Previous Menu once again. Click Previous Menu once again. Next option will be to select the mode. Press once. It will ask you which type your patient should be at. Is your patient in a step-down unit? In the emergency department, in post-anesthesia care unit, in coronary care unit, in the operating room, or whether your patient is a pediatric patient or a neonate. Select your option by scrolling the trim knob, press once to confirm, and then go back to previous menu, press the trim knob once. To go back to the normal screen, scroll down the trim knob to normal screen, press once, and you are back in your home screen. Next on the command key panel is the patient data and trend. Once in, you press trend, where you will see the different options for you to choose from. You can go to the graphical trend of your patient. Where the, where the time scale can be adjusted from 20 minutes to 72 hours. And the resolution is from 10 seconds to 1 minute. Within the 20 minute trend length, the displayed time period is 30 minutes and the resolution is 10 seconds. With trend lengths from 1 to 72 hours, the displayed time period is 72 hours and the resolution is one minute. Next, numerical trends contain four pages with a maximum of 72 hours of trend data. Lastly, the snapshot is on this page. You just need to click your trim knob to choose the next snapshot, press, and then rotate your trim knob to scroll through the snapshot that you have chosen. Once done, you go back to the previous menu. Where you can see the alarm history. Press the trim knob you will see all the alarm that happened to your patient. Once done, press the trim knob once again to the previous menu. Now, go back to the normal screen. Adjustments may be made to the screen manually. This menu is found under the monitor setup on the main menu. So under monitor setup, you will see these options here. We start with screen setup. Again, use the trim knob, press down. So you have your waveform fields, digit fields, split screen, mini trend, and then the previous menu. Under waveform fields, 
you will have the option to choose what parameters you want to see on your monitor. Once done, you go back to previous menu, scroll down to digit fields, and press once again. Under digit fields, it will ask you what parameters you want on the lower field of your screen. Once done, go back to previous menu once again. And then you go on to the next split screen, scroll down, press the trim knob once. It will ask you whether you want a trending or no trend. So if you choose not to have a trend, then you just click none and then go back and then you go back to previous menu once again and then back to normal screen if there is nothing else you want to do other than screen setup you have sweep speeds on your screen if you want to adjust the sweep speed of your waveforms then you click sweep speed press your trim knob once and then choose the speed that you want once done you go back to previous menu once again next is brightness display currently it's at 70 percent if you want to bring it up scroll down press once rotate your trim knob until the desired brightness level press once and you're done If you want to check the battery setup, click battery setup, press the trim knob once. It will tell you the options. So battery A is there, battery B. If you will look at the screen, currently there is no battery for battery A. You, it means you are only using one battery for this monitor at the present time. Once done, click previous menu once again. And then, back to normal screen press once and you are back to your home screen the b40 patient monitor provides both audible and visual alarm notification the location of the alarm messages can be displayed in three areas of the main screen first off is the message field on top Next is the waveform field, and lastly, you will see it on the measurement digit field. Aside from these three, the alarm light on the frame of the monitor also flashes during an alarm. While the alarm light is flashing on the screen, you will also hear the audible alarm on the monitor. Selecting the alarm setup key on the command key panel will open the alarm setup menu. Once the alarm setup menu is open, you can adjust limits for most of the parameters that are on the screen. So click Adjust Limits. It will bring you to the different parameters. The highlighted parameters are the ones that you can adjust. So you either scroll left or right and then press the trim knob once again. So currently, the highlighted portion is the high heart rate limit, which you can adjust by scrolling your trim knob once again until you reach the desired numerics that you want. So once you are happy with this, you press the trim knob once again, and then it will bring you to adjust the lower heart rate limit. Again, rotate the trim knob until you reach the desired parameter that you want, and then press once. So once you have adjusted that, you can go back to the previous menu by pressing the trim knob once again. It will once again bring you to the multi-parameter limits. Aside from adjusting the limits per parameter, you can actually exit, press the trim knob, and then scroll down to go to auto limits. So when you press auto limits, they will base it 
on the parameters that they have gotten from the patient. Usually, auto limits will be 15% above what has been recorded for your patient. If you are curious to see what the default limits are, then scroll the trim knob, press once. So default limits will be based on what has been set on your monitors. So on this page, you will see all the default limits for all the parameters. Next, we scroll down to the arrhythmia alarms, press once, you will see that the lethal arrhythmias are all red. Red priority means high level of alarm. If you will look at this on the right side, create snapshot, it's all yes. What does it mean? It just means that if it's an asystole, ventricular fibrillation, or ventricular tachycardia, it will automatically create a snapshot for you. Next, alarm setup. Press once, then you are back to your alarm setup page. Next, we scroll down. After alarm limits, the highlighted portion is now the alarm volume. Press once to adjust the alarm volume. If you want a higher alarm volume, then you just press. You will see that the numbers are changing. Once you are happy, press the trim knob once again. To set. So currently, alarm volume is now at level 7. We scroll down. If you want audio on or off, that is the button that you press. So once you press it, these are the options for you. Activate alarms. Once you press that, it's activating all your alarms. Scroll down once again to go back to the previous menu. Once more, Press normal screen to go back to your home page. The ECG menu is accessed by selecting the ECG key on the command key panel. Once you press that, it will bring you to the ECG page where you can adjust the leads that you want to monitor on ECG lead 1, 2, and 3. So you can adjust it by once again pressing the trim knob and then scrolling up or down to the selected lead that you want and then press once to enter it for that specific ECG lead. You can also adjust the ECG size by pressing the trim knob once again and then scrolling clockwise or counterclockwise until you reach the desired size that you want and then press once. Relearning the ECG tells your monitor that you are changing the number of leads that you are monitoring. If you are monitoring 3 leads ECG and you want to change it to a 5 lead ECG monitoring, then you just need to press relearn by pressing the trim knob once again. So now it's telling you that the monitor is relearning the ECG setup. Next, we have ECG setup. Press the trim knob once it will bring you to the following parameters. If you want a beat sound, then press the trim knob once and then adjust the beat volume to the desired volume that you want. Press the trim knob once again. Next, we go to heart rate source. Press once to give you the option. If you press auto, it will give you the best heart rate source possible. Other than auto, you have the option to choose either ECG, arterial blood pressure, or heart rate coming from the platysmogram. So once you have chosen the desired heart rate source, press the trim knob once to enter it there. Next, display with heart rate. Press the trim knob once. Do you want the pulse rate to be displayed with the heart rate? Do you want the PVC to be displayed with the heart rate? Press once for your choice and enter. Next, filtering. Press filtering to choose the option that you want to be filtering. You have three options, monitoring, 
ST filtering, or diagnostic. Default setup for the monitor is monitoring filtering. Next, pacemaker. Does your patient have a pacemaker? Press once. You have the option to show pacemaker, to hide pacemaker, or sensitive option for the pacemaker. Choose the option that you want and press the trim knob once again. Next, QRS with, press, you choose the option whether you want it normal or narrow. Default setup is normal QRS with. Next, do you want a grid on the ECG? Press the trim knob once again, whether you want it on or off. If you want it on, press the trim knob. You will see that now there are grids on the ECG. Five lead cable. You will have the option to choose whether you want to do three lead ECG monitoring or five lead ECG monitoring. So you need to key it in here. V lead, which V lead are you using? Press and then choose which V lead you want. Once you have chosen your lead, press the trim knob once again to enter what you have chosen, and then press Previous Menu, Normal Screen, then you are back to your home screen. To access the SPO2 Setup menu, select the SPO2 key from the Command Key panel. Once there, you will have these options to choose from. So the plethysmograph scale can be adjusted. Normally, we select auto to auto scale the waveform. Next, we have SPO2 response. The choices are either normal, which is 12 seconds, or fast, which is three seconds. So choose the option that you want and press the trim knob. Next, beat sound volume, which allows you to adjust the volume of the pulse or the heartbeat sound between zero to 10. Next, heart rate source will be either auto, ECG, arterial line, or the plethysmograph. SPO2 alarm allows you to change the upper and lower limit of your SPO2. Once done, Go back to previous menu. Screen setup allows you to set the waveform and the digit fields. Once done, you go back to normal screen. Okay. To adjust the NIBP setup, you press NIBP on the command key panel. It will bring you to the cycle time. So to change the cycle time, you press the trim knob once again, and then you press the desired cycle time that you want to be monitored on your patient and press the trim knob. There is an option for custom setup, which allows you to change the frequency of BP monitoring. On this page, you will notice that there are four BP series options that can be chosen. If you have a patient who just came in from the operating room going to the recovery room, you may want to measure the BP more often in the initial first hour. So this custom setup will help you prepare for that. If you will look at this, you have four options in the series. 
it will ask you first BP series if you want to monitor every five minutes for an hour then you press every five minutes so how many times do you have to repeat that in one hour press repeat scroll down press so you want to repeat BP monitoring for 12 times every five minutes in the first BP series once your monitor has finished the every 5 minute monitoring for 12 times, you can go on to the second BP series. Maybe I want to increase my NIBP monitoring from every 5 minutes to every 30 minutes. So scroll down the trim knob until you reach the desired series setup that you want and then press. How many times do you want your monitor to check the NIBP every 30 minutes? Maybe if you want to do it for another R, then you change repeat two times. So now you have two BP series in this custom setup. After the 30-minute monitoring, maybe you will want to keep monitoring your patient for every 60 minutes and you want to do it for another two hours. Once you are done adjusting this, you go back to the previous menu, press the trim knob once again, and then you go to your cycle time, press, scroll until you see custom. So if you choose custom for the cycle time, it will follow the cycling time that you have set in the custom setup for your NIBP, which can be seen here. Then, click your trim knob, go back to previous menu once again. Next on the list is NIBP setup. Press the trim knob once again. Inflation limits, you press auto. The other options will be auto, neonate, adult, or pediatric. Ready prompt is here as well. You have the option to change it, whether you want no volume of sound after every completion of NIBP reading, or you want, you want a sound to indicate the completion of a BP measurement. Once you are happy, press the trim knob once again, and then go back to previous menu. NIBP alarm can be adjusted on the alarm setup page or on this page. So this is where you will adjust the upper and the lower limit of the systolic NIBP, diastolic, and the mean NIBP. Once done, go back to previous menu once again. Next, screen setup, where you will put the NIBP, whether you want it on the upper parameter field or on the lower parameter field. So once done, you go back to the previous menu once again. And then now go back to your home screen. Now, let's look at the NIBP digit field in more detail. A typical display of the field is shown. There is no waveform associated with NIBP. If you will look at the upper portion, the alarm limits are stated here. Next, you see the systolic measurement, the diastolic measurement, the mean, and if you will look at this, it tells you the time of the last measurement of your patient. There are two keys on the main menu that initiate a blood pressure measurement. NIBP Auto On Off starts or stops the automatic time blood pressure measurements. NIBP Start or Cancel starts or stops a manual measurement.
To access the Invasive Setup menu, select IBP from the Command Key panel, which will bring you to the Invasive Pressure menu. Zero pressures zeroes all transducers to atmospheric pressure. Next, IBP1 Setup is where you will set the label, which you can change. So you have the option to choose among these options. Next, you can also adjust the scale, the digit format, the response, filter frequency, heart rate source. You can also adjust this. So arterial line cursor whether you want to adjust it or not so this is how you will adjust it if you will notice the lines are moving up and down so press once you are happy or if you want to remove the cursor just press that and then you go back to the previous menu IBP alarm can once again be adjusted either from the alarm setup menu or from this option here. Here, you can see that you can adjust the upper and lower limits of your arterial blood pressure. Once done, you go back to previous menu. Previous menu once again. Then you are back here. Next, they will ask you for the ventilation mode of your patient. So press the trim knob once again. Is your patient on a ventilator or is your patient breathing spontaneously? Choose the option that is applicable for your patient. Press the trim knob. And then you go back to the normal screen. Next, we will discuss the features of the airway gas menu which you can find on the airway gas on the command key panel once again. Once you are in the airway gas menu, these are the options that you can adjust. First off, we discuss CO2 setup. Once in, it will ask you the scale that you want for the CO2 measurement. Press the trim knob to adjust the scale. Once done, press and exit. What is the unit of measurement that you want? Press to choose whether you want millimeter mercury, KPA, or percentage. Once done, press the trim knob once again. Next on the list is the respiratory rate source. So either you choose auto or respiratory rate source will be the carbon dioxide of your patient. Next, do you want the measurement to be on or off? So you just choose the option that you want and press the trim knob once again. Next, adjusting the CO2 alarm, which can be found on the alarm setup page as well as on this page. Once you press that, it will allow you to change the upper and lower limits of your carbon dioxide monitoring. Once done, press Previous Menu. Next, Respiratory Rate Alarm, you press. It will allow you to change the upper and lower limit of the respiratory rate. Once done, press the Previous Menu once again. Previous Menu, and you are back to this page. After adjusting the CO2 setup, you will now go to O2 setup, where you will be asked about the scale, whether you want the measurement to be on or off, and the alarms for the oxygen. So it will give you the option to change your alarm limits once again. Once done, go back to previous menu. Previous menu once again. And now, you can adjust the agent. 
So these are the items that can be adjusted on the agent or nitrous oxide setup. So agent measurement, whether you want it on or off, press and then change. Next, nitrous oxide measurement, do you want it on or off? Next is agent alarm. Once you press agent alarm, it will ask you which agents you are monitoring and how you want to adjust the limits for these agents. Once you are done, you press previous menu once again, previous menu once again, which will bring you back to the airway gas menu. Next up is gas calibration. Here, you will see the status of the calibration of the different gases you are monitoring. Once done, you go back to the previous menu. On this menu, you can also see the last calibration time. So, as an example, it was last calibrated on January 1, 1970 at 12 midnight. Now, you go back to the previous menu. Once done, go back to the normal screen. So next up on the command key panel is others. Once you open it, you will see that there are other parameters that can be adjusted, such as the respiratory setup, wherein you can adjust the size the respiratory rate source, detection limit, respiratory rate alarm. Once done, you go back to the previous menu where you can adjust the temperature setup next. Under temperature setup, it will ask you to label the two temperatures that are being monitored. Aside from that, the unit that you are currently monitoring whether it's in centigrade or Fahrenheit. Once you have chosen, press the trim knob once again. Temperature alarms, which can be adjusted on this page as well as on the alarm setup page. Once done, you go back to previous menu. Previous menu. Next up is entropy. When you are monitoring for entropy, then you need to adjust on this page. Here, you will see the things that you can adjust for entropy, such as the EEG scale of entropy, the trend length, if you want to monitor it for 30 minutes, press the trim knob to enter. What do you want to display? Do you want response entropy only, state entropy only? Do you want response entropy plus state entropy? Or do you want all? So you choose the option that you want and press the trim knob once again. When you are starting the entropy monitoring, you need to go to this portion to check the sensor. Of course, for entropy monitoring, it will ask you, do you want an automatic check of the sensor? So, press the trim knob and choose the option that you want. Do you want automatic check to be on or off? Press and go back. Next, for entropy alarms, you can adjust it here. Press and then choose the alarms that you want. So, once you have adjusted the alarms for response entropy and state entropy, you go back to the previous menu. Go back to previous menu once again and back to your normal screen. <laughs>